Hello, this is Nick here from Gorgon Reviews, and I'm speaking with two gentlemen. We have Anar Thorsteinson, director of the documentary Abled, and we have Blake Leeper, star of the documentary Abled, and also much, much faster than me at running. Um, <laughs> Abel had its world premiere at the Seattle International Film Festival this last weekend, chronicling the many years journey of Blake here trying to qualify for the Olympics, with the biggest thing blocking his way being biases, not stopwatches. So thank you so much for spending time this afternoon with me here, virtually. <laughs> thank you. You're, we're honored to be here with you. Yeah, thank you so much. To get things, uh, to, to open things up a bit for both of you, um, what is the first movie you remember seeing in theaters? Uh, for me, it's uh, I was a newspaper boy in Reykjavik, Iceland. And I remember for every 100 papers you sold, you would earn points towards a free screening on a 9 o'clock in the morning on Saturdays. And it happened to be City Lights by Charlie Chaplin, one of my favorite films of all time. Wow. Like, it's a tough one. I would think, gosh, first movie in theater, I would say Mighty Ducks, <laughs> if, I, if I can remember. The Flying V. Mighty Ducks 2? Yeah, my, yeah. Okay, my, no, 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 no. This, okay, hold on. This is too crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, I hate, I never cut anyone off. Yeah. But the star of Mighty Ducks 2 uh -huh. happened to be the lady that bought my house when I was nine years old no. and she moved into my room in no. Iceland. <laughs> I know we're only 360,000 people, but the one she was referencing <laughs> actually lived in, in my in room. My room. She's still about two years old. Yeah. Already. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Full circle that, moment. See? That's, how funny yeah. that. <laughs> that, that's how we're connected. Yeah. Iceland, of course, is the bad wow. guys in that movie um, yeah. and also not known for hockey. It's just yeah, it's a really weird film. Not really <laughs> uh, so for Blake, after watching this documentary, I'm sure it's been said before, but you seem to ooze out positivity. Yeah. Um, this was a long struggle. And at least on camera, you always seemed optimistic or you were at least ready to move on to the next fight. Even the scene where you started swearing a lot seemed to somehow feel positive. <laughs> um, <laughs> where do you think all this comes from? Um, I would just think, and I think, you know, Anna did such a great job of capturing that, but I, I start with my family, my, you know, my mother and my father, like what they instilled in me, even at an early age, just the positivity they had. And like, there was moments, you know, watching the film, even today, it was just like, I started crying, just like tears were rolling down my eyes, just like seeing how supportive my mother and father was in those early days when I was just, like in, in my mother's stomach or like having my brother around me. So it just like, I just get so emotional just seeing the support I had from day one, just from just from my from, from my first beginning steps in my prosthetic legs. And just to be able to watch that on the big screen. Um, and it just really just shows that it took a village. Like I really think, and Anar can speak to this too, it took a village to shoot this documentary. And, and I think my positivity and my mindset and the person I am today, it, it took a village to, to raise me and to and support me and to love me. So I wouldn't just say, you know, I wake up and I, I'm just so positive. I, you know, I just think all the people around me who just like love me and supported me and didn't give up on me, I did, I, I fight for that and I keep my positivity so I won't give up on them. Mm -hmm. And uh, what point in your life do you think running became your passion? Uh, I would say back in 2009, 10, you know, the, those, those first moments uh, on my blades. It was actually, you, you had that in the film um, where there was a lady in the background. I remember it was, it was Chili, my, my prostitute's wife, and she was, it was my first time on, on my blades. And I was running around the curve and the way the wind was hitting my face. That was the fastest, that, that moment where people don't, maybe some people may not realize, that was the fastest I ever ran in my life at that time. And that's why the lady in the background was saying, oh, my gosh. And, and, we, and you, caught, you captured that because that was that was the experience in that moment. We were just shocked and surprised how how quick I was able to just respond to this technology. And, and, and in that moment, that's when I realized, like, this is something I want to do for the rest of my life as long as I possibly can. Maybe not the rest of my life, but as long as I possibly can. Um, Anar, we've already talked about how you have a long history with movies now, given your your home selling. Um, yes. <laughs> when did you know you would want to start working on films? Oh, 
uh, not that long ago. <laughs> no, I, yeah, yeah. W once again, I'm born and raised in Iceland, and uh, by a complete fluke, I ended up uh, in Los Angeles in the early 90s. Um, started uh, editing music, karaoke videos, music videos, commercials for the longest time, and then I started dappling into documentaries. And after sitting in my editing chair for over 30 years doing uh, commercials, I, I knew that I had needed, I, I felt like I needed a challenge in my life. I needed to step out of the comfort zone of, of being an, an, an editor and, and take on, on uh, something new and fresh. And uh, one day when my, my friend Johan walked into my room and he goes, uh, hey, you know, I found it, you know. I found the guy for you, you know, let's, let's go. Uh, and he told me about Blake, Johan is his fitness trainer. Um, he told me that uh, he'd never ever seen a personality like him before. And, and he knew that it, that's exactly what I was looking for. Uh, I'm not interested in telling anybody's story unless you love them or you hate him. <laughs> you know, there's no middle, middle ground with, 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 with Blake and his story. And uh, he showed up in my office uh, with Blake. We shook hands, looked each other in the eye, and Blake started telling me his story. And, and honestly, within a few, few seconds, I just zoned down everything he was saying. And I was like, oh, I, I'm feeling it. Let's go, let's do this. And I shook his hand, he walked out of the room. <laughs> and I remember hearing that, the door closing, the first thought was like, whoa, what did I just get myself into? <laughs> <laughs> or are you going to find the time for this? I, I have a job. Uh, where's the money coming from? <laughs> <laughs> but I, something just felt really right about it. I committed. And the uh, first thing I did was obviously contact my my friends, like Brian Leong, my camera, main cameraman, my son, Anton. And I told my partners, hey guys, you know, this is, I'm gonna still work here, but this is gonna be my dedication for the next couple of years or so. <laughs> Which ended up, turned out, ended up being five years to the day on five Friday. Ooh, five years, five years. Um, that was actually part of my next question, how, what drew you together. Um, so that was from your point of view, like from your point of view, did you seek out having your story be told or did someone convince you? Yeah, you know, um, I knew I was going to embark on a crazy journey trying to qualify for the Olympics. And, you know, at the time, I didn't know what direction it was going to go, um, how it was going to end up. Obviously, I was optimistic, hoping that I would be able to qualify and, and to compete in the Olympic Games. But I knew documenting and telling my story was going to be a huge part of it. Um, and, and, you know, spending time with Johan day in and day out training, you know, lifting weights and, and making the plans. We knew all the hard work we was putting in. But we knew we had we needed the right person to to tell my story that we trusted, um, and the, and the right team because you know they 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 become your family because they're they're following you with the camera day in and day out you know traveling all over the world traveling all over the nation, and so I I knew I trusted Johan um, with with everything in my life. So when he he mentioned Anar and and his team and what he does, I knew if Johan trusted him, then I could trust him. And so that's when we made the connection. I brought, I went into his office. I told him my story, and like like I said, he's from Iceland, and I'm I'm from Tennessee. But but like you know, the time I spent with him, I always felt like he was part of my family, and he always felt like he was my my, my brother, my my fun uncle. I don't know what you want to call it, but but he was just always there, just supporting me. And I, I'm so 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 thankful that that it ended up the way it did. Um, and for those, you know, for those who don't know, like during my whole case and my fight, you know, I, I was embargoed on a lot of my, on a lot of my situations where I couldn't go to the public. I couldn't go to the media. I couldn't tell my story, but in, in the back of my head and I knew through everything that nobody knew was I had this man with the camera following everything. And I knew when the time was right, when we, when we finished all this up, when it's all said and done, I will finally get my story and my life out there to the world. And this premiere is just like the stepping stone of letting the world know of all the hard work that I put in, you know, everybody that's been there supporting me, 
you know, my family, my friends, everybody in the crowd and the stands and all the stuff that's gone in just to even be here in this point in my life. Um, do you think at any point in the future, the Olympic committee people might finally change their minds or just waiting for them to die out? Um, honestly, that's a, I don't know if they will or not. I, they, they could be so stuck in their ways. I hope that gets their attention, but, but the bigger picture, I hope it sheds light on, on how somebody like me with a disability, uh, that had a, a dream and a goal and, and how I was unfairly treated. So in the bigger scheme of things, it's not more so if they change their mind about my situation, but I hope they change their minds on future situations. Let me add to that. I mean, after experiencing all of this as a fan of sports in general, especially track and field, the main question that came to my mind, obviously, before I even, we even took on this project was, you know what? I don't know, man. I, I, I'm not. I'm not even convinced myself if it's fair. Yes, it looks like he's a little slower out of the box. It looks like you know. But don't they don't don't they have uh, the, a, a venue for him and 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 Paralympics? Why doesn't he just compete there? But then again, he is a disabled person. Happens to be a minority. Which really has nothing to do with our film in, in so many ways. But he's never ever placed on a podium when he's competing amongst the elite track and field 400 meter runners. Doesn't that really tell everything? If he was if he was destroying every single race, every single competition, there's no way I would have even been interested in telling his story. But that's not the case after everything. He has never, ever been on the podium with the best of the best. And as a, as a fan of sports, before I even knew him, that meant a lot to me. And that, that, that was truly the core of why we should tell this story. Given that this, is the, this week has been the world premiere, um, what are the next steps on getting this story and documentary out there? You guys. Yeah. <laughs> It's all in your hands. Yeah, yeah, we've done everything we can. <laughs> no more film yeah. festivals. He's, he's got a good voice. He's pretty good at marketing. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, um, in our, this is a weirder one. I saw you were an additional editor on the movie Pathfinder in 2007. Wow. What does oh. that mean? <laughs> you know what? It, it, it truly means that I, I was. My, my background is, like I said, karaoke videos for a year, <laughs> where I made, you know, fifty dollars a day, and then I graduated into music videos, where, believe it or not, I started making five hundred dollars. Nice. Then I, I moved into a commercials, and it is where it is, and it, it was honestly uh, me getting to know a lot of young talented directors that were the best of the best. And one of them happened to be this German guy named Marcus Nispel. Uh, he was probably one of the most successful commercial directors in the world for a good 10, 15 years or so. And I'm proud enough to say that I happened to be one of his editors. He actually discovered me from music videos. And uh, he's his first, no, he, hold on, he is the director of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, that would be the remake of it. It would, became very successful in around 2010 or so. And his next project was the Pathfinder. And uh, uh, he actually it happened to be edited by my partner, Jay Friedkin. And it was basically, uh, a side job. While I was working on Marcus's commercials, uh, there were some scenes in there that he thought I was right for. I'm known for cutting like action-packed stuff and montages, and uh, he brought me on, and I was, you know, <laughs> should I say grateful enough to uh, get that opportunity, and 
it, it, it was a good experience, but let me just say, I, I, I don't see the future world being my, uh, anywhere near in my future. I don't think it's my thing. Okay. I, I want to tell more simpler stories than that, much more simpler stories. Um, that is a great, to my last one of these, um, great segue. In the documentary, Blake, you already answered this, but feel free to answer it again now, even though it's yeah. near the end and a spoiler, um, maybe. Uh, but outside of this documentary, what are your next goals in life that you're hoping to work towards for both of you? Yeah, yeah. So outside the documentary, like you said, is a, is a little spoiler alert, but um, I've been taking a lot of acting classes, um, you know, just going through this journey um, and just go with the highs and the lows. I started thinking a lot more about my future and, and what's that, what that looks like. Um, and, and in the back of my head, I'm not done running yet. You know, I'm still I'm still competing, um, even at the new height, as you've seen. Uh, I, was, I was shorter towards the end, and I'm still trying to qualify, still trying to run, but I'm just kind of, kind of looking even farther ahead um, where I'm taking acting classes. Um, I'm doing a lot more motivational speaking, um, and I'm just really just trying to have fun and just enjoy my family. You know, I have my daughter, uh, I have my fiance, and and then I have I have my new family, my new documentary family too. So we're gonna we're gonna ride this wave of the, of the documentary and hopefully get the story out there to the world that hopefully inspires a whole generation of just disabled individuals. You know, people who are going through things. You know, people that get denied their self that has nothing to do with sports, but just in life. Um, and I hope they they watch this documentary and say, you know what, Blake fought for his life. And he was denied, but he still kept fighting. And so hopefully when they go through their lives, they can they can reference this and they can use this moving forward. So I'm just gonna just try to be a light and just still try to be an inspiration, just moving forward, just whether it's on the movie screen, you know, TV screen, or just doing, you know, talks, speeches, or just spending time with my daughter. Any uh ones for you, Einar? Gonna follow it up. <laughs> how, how do I follow that up? Uh, no, no, no. No, once again, I, I'm, I'm just so grateful for the opportunity. Obviously, and this is might be it's going to be a cliche answer here. Uh, it, it was a bumpy road. It took a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and uh, a lot of internal fights, uh, a lot of obstacles in the way. But man, in the end, it, after thousands of hours of labor and, and love and struggles with everyone, here we are. And uh, like I said, it's been five years, but I, I couldn't be happier and prouder of what we have achieved here. Uh, and uh, once again, Blake and your team, thank you, buddy. Thank you, sir. I appreciate <laughs> it. Oh, I can't believe it's done. That's wild. Oh. <laughs> So once again, thank you both so much for spending your time answering some questions about the documentary Abled. If you miss Abled at the Seattle International Film Festival, first, what's wrong with you? No, you're probably just not here. Um, but secondly, you can still watch it. It's one of the virtual films from May 22nd to May 28th. And good luck on getting the message out there. Thank you. Thank you.